Let us open our Bibles, our notebooks, and our pens, or cell uh, smartphone, phone, or anything that we use. So when I take time to be taught the Word of God, in this month of October, everyone who has preached here. Uh, we talked about the power of prayer. Because one of the things that the Christians know about is about prayer. They like praying. But it's not always that we pray in a scriptural way. Sometimes we do pray, but it does not bring the fruits or the results we are expecting. But James said in the Bible that we, we, you don't receive what you pray for because you pray it in the wrong way. It means that you can be praying but not receiving what you are praying for. And Jesus himself said it. He said there are people who go in street corners and they pray and say they speak many words but not according to the will of God. Because they are hypocrites, they want to be seen by people. And they don't do it in a way of giving glory to God. I want to remind you that we are in the new covenant today. So in the new covenant where there is no, no uh, mediator between uh, uh, no human mediator between God and man. In other words, yes, you can pray for someone. Yes, even though you pray for some, you can pray for someone, it doesn't mean that you are standing in the middle between you and that man. We do know that Jesus prays for us. And we know the Spirit also prays earnest, a, a prayer that cannot be uttered. But prayer is communication which comes from the fellowship that you have with God. And it's not, it's not a one way, it's a, it's a double, it's a dual communication, one side and two side. And there's no formula. That's why when you get used to the prayer that you read in the book, you may read a prayer which is not relevant to the current situation. Yes, you can be blessed by the prayer that was written by someone. You, you don't have to be dependent to the prayer that was written by someone else. That's, that's what we do even in the songs that we sing in the church. Here in Oasis, when we come here, you have maybe sense that the way we sing, it's not a song of speaking to you or addressing to the church people. Sometimes we use those songs uh, when we go for, for, for outreach programs. But, but the songs that we sing here are songs that are addressed to God talking about who he is and what he is in our lives. In other words, even when we are singing here, we are, we are praying, we are speaking to God. But you can even hear a song and you can find in a song, let's say, a verse which is not uh, in line with what, with what you believe. You're not obliged to just say it in the same way. Because it's you who is speaking to God already. So, as you are singing that song, you, you can see how you can adapt that song 
and speak it to God in a way that you feel your heart is leading to. Because God is not leading, like watching us in a group. He doesn't see as a group. He sees each one of us in his in, in our hearts. That's the same with prayer. You need to pray according to what you believe. Not according to what you've heard. So last Sunday we explained to you that there are two kingdoms. There is the kingdom of light, which is the kingdom of heaven. And that's the kingdom of the, his uh, beloved son, Jesus. And there is the kingdom of darkness, which, which is the, the, the kingdom of the devil uh, where, where that, that he uses to bring people to do and So when you get saved, you are transferred, you move to that kingdom of, of, of light. We took time to explain that it is a kingdom. There's, a, there's like a protocol. And even though you don't see it with your physical eyes, but that spiritual kingdom is what dictates what you see in the physical realm. So when you are praying, obviously you are in the physical realm but you gotta have this awareness that you are functioning from a spiritual realm so then you need to know the rules of that kingdom so you want act in a contradicting way. What I want us to share this morning is that in that kingdom you've been given authority. Mm. We said there is what we can say power and authority. And authority. I mean, you can be having power but without authority. So, uh, then, then you are in a position where you cannot use that authority that you have been given by, the, by someone who, who have been uh, given all the power. And then, be able to function and command in his name. That's why you need to understand and to question yourself and say, do I understand the legal authority that I have to function in this physical realm? And that helps you when you are praying. When you are praying, then you know in which position you are standing. Let's read the Bible. Let's go, to, let's go to Matthew 18, verse 18. Mm. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you shall lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Uh, uh, so what, as I was reading this verse, uh, it just uh, bring me in the in some of the you know what I see in TV sometimes. When they are now like, uh, like giving like ranks to the officers or NCOs, let's say in the military or in the police, after they completed their schools, they, they, they granted them, they gave them authority, some kind of authority. They give them authority. Uh, to be able to function in the, you know, with, the, with the rules and the laws the based in what the, Burundi, the, the current law uh, says. 
So here it says you shall have power. Power to bind. Say after me to bind. To bind. Uh, uh, let me say it in another word. Uh, how do you say it may not in English? I don't know. So this, you, you shall have like the, the, the power to to uh, I don't know, to lock. So when someone has violated the law, when someone has violated the, the, the law, so you, this is the officers, you shall have the power to bind him, to, 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 to forbid him. So to limit the person so the person won't continue harming or causing trouble in the community. So the Bible says that if you believe in Christ as your Lord, so you shall have now authority to bind to limit the devil and the demons for what they are, they are doing. Hallelujah. Amen. So prayer prayer is not just being there and see what the devil is doing and causing harm into the life of the people. And see what the demons are doing in the life of people in the realm of the spirit. Then after you've, you've seen all of that you go and you negotiate with the demo, demons and they say oh please let them go. But, so now in the power now that you have received through prayer the Bible is saying you got a power to bind that authority is not your own authority but you have been given that authority you've been given that by the one who has overcome, over, overcome div, uh, demons and devil that's why when you are praying it's not that you may call Jesus to come and do that work but it is you are using that power that you believe in so you can stop all the works that the enemy is calling but you got to be aware of that authority definitely we pray and we worship God because he's almighty God. definitely we pray and we bless people that we know but we also got power authority we got authority Amen. to stop the works of the enemy in the territory that we have. Mm. I was expecting some good, man. He was, this is a good news. Let's go on. Let's read in the book of Matthew. Same book. Chapter 16, verse 18 to 19. Haravugango. Nanje ndakubwira yuko uri Petero kandi kandi uri kuri ugo rutare zo nzo kubaka kwishengero ryanje kandi amarembo yikuzimu nazo rishobora nzo guha imfunguzo z'ubwami bwo mwijuru kandi ico uzohambira mwisi kizoba gihambiriwe mwijuru nico uzohamburura mwisi kizoba gihamburuwe mwijuru it says and i say also unto thee that you are peter and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give the, unto the, you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you shall lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. This is a powerful and heavy word. This is when Jesus was about to go to heaven. He has fulfilled all the requirements. He has, he had done everything, you know, to show that he got power in heaven and earth. Because Jesus said in other scripture that I have received all the power. But now I give you power. I delegate this power to you so you can go and change, make my people my disciples. 
Now he's speaking to Peter, one of the disciples. Wewe kuko ngomba kwatangura ikintu kitwa ishengero rya Kristo rye gutangura kuva muri kirobihe. He said because I want to start something which called church which is going to start So the church will be like a representation of the kingdom of heaven in this world So the church we have a power power over any other power which will be in the world and we have power even over the, the influence of the enemy and the devil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All of us who believe in Christ as our Lord and Savior, we have entered in the church of Christ. We are part of that family which is the family, the church of Christ. In the Respect that I owe you. I would like to ask you, who among you are part of the Church of Christ? Yes. You are part of. You are part of an institution which has more power than any other institution in this world. I was expecting some good. See, that power is beyond uh, any other institution that you can ever imagine in this world. I remind you that when we say church or ecclesia, it's not just here or where is this. Right? This is only one church in the world. Oh, there is only one church in the world. This, it's not like local churches, no. Is the, uh, what I'm talking about is the church of Christ where Christ is the, the, the shepherd. The good shepherd. There are people who are in Oasis unfortunately who are not part of the church of Christ. Because there is a, a protocol, there is a way to join that church. There are people over there in uh, Roman Catholic Church, Pachis over there. There are some who are part of the Church of Christ and others that are not part of her. There are other in, others in Anglican Church. Among them, some are in the Church of Christ and others are aren't. Because you, we enter in that Church of Christ uh, through the, 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 the rebirth, the, the, the experience of being born again. Here, we are not talking about the members of Oasis. No, we mean those because, those because of uh, believing in him, those are the one part of the church. The Bible says that that church has power over all other institutions. Even the gates of hell shall not prevail again. When you are praying, you don't pray like always this uh, yeah, Stop praying like Pentecost church Sing member. Uh -huh. You need to pray like someone who has, who is part of a church who, that has power over all other institutions. And there, there, whatever you shall bind in this earth shall also be bound in heaven. So every time you pray, Remember that you are part of that church that has power over other uh, institutions. So, in that case, there, you now are praying, exercising your, your authority that you have. Mark 11, verse 23. Je vous le dis en vérité, si quelqu'un dit à cette montagne, ôte-toi de là et jette-toi dans la mer, et s'il ne doute pas, s'il ne doute point en son cœur, mais croit que ce qu'il qu dit arrive, il le, sait, il le verra s'accomplir. For verily I say unto you, 
Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and you shall not doubt in, he, in his heart, but shall believe that those things that he said shall come to pass, and shall have whatsoever he, he said. The Bible says that if someone has faith, and he believes that whatsoever he said in prayer will come Bible to pass, then he will see it pass. I demand you that this word Jesus was talking to the disciples. He wasn't telling them what he, he wished them to do. But he was rather telling them that about what he has done and showing them that they will have the same power to do that. There's no limit in this world. That can prevent a believer to see what God has spoken about The problem is on this small one word that's, that, that is doubt. There is saying that cake so when you are praying without doubting, and when you are praying this way and you know it's the word of God and you are not trying to reason with your mind, this what you believe shall happen. Let's finish by this uh, scripture of Luke. Uh, 10 verse 19. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 To thread on serpent and the scorpion and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall be any means hurt you. How many believe the word of God is truth? Brothers and sisters, what do I need what, what I need to know is just to know that this which comes to attack me is the enemy. You know, he said, nothing shall by any means hurt you, which is from the enemy. Now, let's check out, check, check, check out in our own life. Do you know how many people, born again Christians, who are Scared, who are afraid of October, November, and December. And you know, now the Christians are like, their ears are eager to hear uh, like the tragedy and the situation which happened because people are afraid as if there are some special months which. You know, uh, terrible. Brothers and sisters, go and do some research. And uh, see among the people that you know. The great people that you've heard. And think about the people that you know who died in the month of April. And the people that you you heard that died in the month of October. And we find like in the month of April, there's no many people who die. Because all the churches in April, they are learning about uh, Jesus overcoming death and, and grave and resurrection. And they, they feel, the church people feel like, they, no, the power of the enemy cannot Heard them. 
ubwo agurufura tera n'abakristu bagacavuga ngo uku kwezi uku kwezi mutarazi neza biraje si now because burundians know in their mind that the heroes of independence and the heroes of democracy all of them they were killed in october so they kind of oh they are like oh, oh if you don't pay much attention something wrong might happen again duvise abantu duvise ibintu byinshi abantu bako barapfa biteye ubwoba gusumbuka na byumvise maze aheze muri nomi i think i've heard more tragic story of people dying in this more than i've heard it in another other months yesterday i heard some sad tragic story of like a whole family people going to, to the airport and then they got an accident all the families Yes. We are hearing some sad story just all over the the city. And no, no one has the authority over those things happening all over except the Church of Christ. I don't want to read that, but I just want to remind you. Yes, James. Among the three that were uh, close, closest friends to Jesus. Every time Jesus was with a few, few disciples, he was with John, uh, James, and uh, Peter. After Jesus is gone, Herod, King Herod decided to kill all of them and finish. He took James and he put, them in, put him in jail. They killed him literally and he died. No, I mean James, the one who was friend to Jesus. Not, not the one who heard about Jesus. So people can say, ah, so Jesus, did Jesus fail to protect, that, protect him? Because the way we see death is not the same way that Jesus sees death. Because for Jesus, death is like sleeping. And after death, there is resurrection for the dead. So the people that were part of the church of Christ, when James was uh, caught and were, he was put in jail, people say, ah, don't worry about that. I know he will come back like uh, working like, he will come back out of the prison. Yeah. And then they heard us, they heard that James was killed. And the Bible says, now the apostles, they met together and questioned. And uh, they said, Herod now is going to get a, a second one. He took Peter. They put, put him in jail. And he said, Peter also needs to be killed. And the church went together and they said, we are not going to accept that this, the same, well, the same that happened to James who happened to him. The Bible says that when the church was now praying, a heavenly, a heavenly angel went in the prison and released Peter from from the jail. If you want to get more details, go to the book of Acts chapter 12 from verse 1. Why was James killed and not Peter? All of them were friends to Jesus at the same, like at the same level. For one, the church did not stand in their, in their authority and stop the enemy from taking gems. But for Peter now, we see the church standing up and stopping the devil or the enemy to, to stop uh, what he did for James. That's why when we are talking about prayer, it's not some game. It's not some religious 
uh, is about exercising your authority in order to stop the enemy from having influence over you or your family or the things around you. Don't wake up just in the morning. Lord, I thank you. You know how this day is going to be. Thank you. Amen. Amen. No. Mm-mm. You gotta stand in a position of authority. That's why I would like to suggest you this practical, um, uh, practical way. On my personal. For me, uh, two kinds of prayer are more important than any other kind of prayer. The morning prayer, early morning. And the prayer in the evening when I go home, when I go to bed. I've got to be aware of the authority I have. I'm giving a testimony about my life. My own prayer life has three main points. If you want, you can write it, you can help. It. The first part of prayer is to thank God for who He is and what He has done for you to be Christ. is to give thanksgiving to God for what he has made you. Father, I thank you that you have loved me even though I did not deserve I thank you that you gave me grace. Thank you that your mercy is there. I thank you. You see, this is a kind of prayer. You tell him, thank you that you give me the mind of Christ. I thank you, Lord, for what you have made. Every day, you know, you got different subjects. But that part of prayer is a part of thanking God. The second part is to declare, to confess what I want to experience that day. There are three things that never miss in my life. Father, I pray and I ask you that through the power of the Spirit give me the wisdom that comes from you. Give me to understand the mystery of your word. Give my eyes to be open so I can see the hope of my calling and help me to become a blessing for others. Help me to find solutions to, of the problems around me. You know, I can go in details depending on the But in that part of prayer life, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm creating what I expect to see that day. And the, the last point. I wear now the helmet and the all the ranks of an officer, all the lieutenants. And now I start now in my authority. In the power that, in authority that I've been given. In the name of Jesus. And I, I say, I pray for my wife and I mention the names of my children, namely, and the people that, I, that we meet her together. According to the different responsibilities. So I say now in the authority that I've been given. I say, I command the devil and the enemies. The spirit of death. The, the, the spirit of accidents. The spirit that causes uh, sickness. And I say, you got, you, you got no power over them. Over the people that I have responsibility over. Sometimes you can receive, God can reveal you some details about some people, and then you take time to pray for those specific things. Sometimes you can even sense that something is happening over the, like the city or the nation, and Certainly. I don't watch just news to know what's happening or the world. The news actually give me information to know the spirits that are operating over the nations. Sometimes, sometimes you hear 
in different places that there's like a, like calamities there was someone who used to you know the national tv who used to, i don't know the person still there's a, there's a guy he who used to give like a, like a warnings say oh you people of rumonge hey, uh, take heed I'm a, I'm a cholera. You know, cholera, cholera. this season cholera is about to to before you think about practical actions i pray so people to, can be protected in that area or in that specific place and that's the same way that's, that's the same way it happens or any other time when you get time to pray i want to finish today's uh, message asking you that you don't go just to pray like a religious person brothers and sisters god doesn't know any religion when you go to heaven you're not going to be looking for the oasis members oasis church members or you will all like going you think you go to heaven you ask what are the catholics no. in heaven there will only be those that have believed in Christ and that have worked in his power from different for all the, the, the tribes and nations in that's the same in that there will be that way even when they before they go to heaven i want to invite my brothers to pray for your family to pray for your country to pray for the people around you but don't pray as someone who is begging god to save dimanche i told you that on sunday legally if you go in the bible and yes illegally jesus does not uh, kick out demons in this world legally the demons are rebuked by someone who has a physical body yes jesus when he was in the world he could do it because he had a physical body. In mark, mark 16 16 jesus he told to the disciples that you will be the one to rebuke them. Don't ask God the Father in heaven to come and do that. But now, pray and thank him that he has given you that power. And that he has given you a name which is above other names. That he has given you power through the Holy Spirit. And that he has given you his word which gives you the legal authority to do so now set position and in that position to exist now you exercise your authority now, now then you bind you command things according to the words uh, instruction if you did it I understand it well. I give you homework go and read the book of acts that, that book will show you how simple and mere simple people and even people who did not believe in God in the first time like Saul who became Paul how they stood up in authority and changed the things around them if the word of God has blessed you let's clap for the word of God